Hello and welcome. I'm Nate 42 and I'm just going to show you this time how to set up um, your Octodroid app to work with the uh, with your actual printer. So that'd be cool. We're in the settings menu now. So if you need to get to here, you go to here, and then it gives you your menu. You can click settings, and it takes you to your settings. Uh, it did actually bring up a setup there. So yeah, I can't seem to find any valid uh, API key. So you go set up. So you put in the IP address and then you can use a QR code. Now you can install a barcode scanner, so we'll just do that real quick. Yeah, and this barcode scanner is just going to make it a hell of a lot easier for you to actually do anything with it. So my IP, you want to find out what your IP is, uh, you just type my IP into Google Chrome or whatever. And then we'll go back here, I will use the QR code part. And I'll just scan this from the screen now, which is in the Octoprint settings. Uh, I will keep this off the screen because, yeah, we don't want other people connecting to my stuff. <laughs> so after you've done that, it will say that you could successfully send JSON um, responses to your IP address. And then you go to the next step to test the API. This step will home the X and Y access. So you just want to go next. And as you can hear in the background, maybe, hopefully, my 3D printer is beeping about and that is it homing the access. Did that home your access? Yes. The setup is complete. You can now enjoy Octodroid. Okay, now that's cool. So now we have here the status for the um, the phone. So if, uh, for the printer, sorry. So if you click this uh, menu up here, you've, uh, you've got some other stuff up here, but that doesn't really matter too much. Uh, you have status, temperature, controls, files, connections, commands, and settings. So settings, will give you your IP and API keys. Uh, you can allow like push notifications, battery save mode, sticky notifications. Um, uh, you can also set the refresh frequency, so how quick you want to get um, updates from your printer. Uh, you can set your max extruder heat um, and your max bed heat, I suppose. Yep. Um, you can also rotate the webcam. Um, now the funny thing with this is I don't think you can actually see the webcam through this program. But what you could do is uh, connect with via VLC. I've not actually done that myself, but I, I, I think if you look in the uh, Octoprint website, um, it will tell and go onto the uh, the webcam and time that's bit. It will give you a stream URL, which is webcam forward slash question mark action equals stream. Um, if you go to your IP address forward slash that, it will just be a video stream of what your webcam has. You can actually punch that into VLC on your phone and allow you to actually view the video in in that way. You can also just go to the website for your phone. Um, the website is still pretty functional for your phone, so it, it is still pretty good. Um, on here, obviously, you're not going to have the plugins that you have on the actual website, um, but that's okay. It's not too bad. With here, you can go to basic authentication, username and password. I don't know what that really... Uh, means right now, but maybe we'll find out in a sec if it says that you need to authenticate your device first. So yeah, you got status, which is it gives you your state and all the temperatures and everything like that at the moment. Um, you go to temperature. You can set the temperature. You can set the extruded temperature and the heat uh, and the bed temperature. Sorry. Uh, under controls, you can actually tell it to move and stuff, so you can home the X, Y, and Z axis. So there we go. That was easy. Um, under files you do have all of the files that you have on the printer and they do seem to be folded as well so I've got the Venus pot here very strange it says it loaded it it said it loaded it but it didn't really load it that's a little bit of an issue because I was hoping to print something from that folder um, but yeah this is all the all the different files that we have uh, available to print so if someone is at home you can tell you can ask them to do stuff for your printer or to remove things or whatever you got connection, and that actually just has the connection settings. It will be connected, and you'll be able to um, change the serial port or the board rate if you really need to. Um, but you shouldn't really need to go into that menu. Commands you can set commands up to go to the printer. Uh, that's just like G code commands, I believe. I don't know why you'd need to do that. Maybe you need to. Maybe you would need to do that um, if you're away from the printer and you need to do something like that. I don't know. It doesn't really matter too much, but it's, it's there just in case. Um, so yeah, and that's pretty much it, really. So what we'll do is we'll go here and we'll say, okay, so we want to print the, um, I don't know, what we got, uh, hex connector v4. So you can just press, um, oh, it's G code as well. Okay, yeah, okay, we'll do this actually. We've got a one by one centimeter block. We'll just press print. That's just starting to print, 
And what is really cool about this is you get a little notification come up, um, which is here, and it will tell you exactly how it's printed from wherever you want to be. Because, um, I mean, obviously, I had to uh, set up port forwarding for it on my router. The good thing about Octoprint is that it does give you a username and password, which you should definitely set. As long as you've set that, it's fairly safe to use that um, across the internet and stuff. So yeah, if you just have that set up with my uh, Virgin Media connection, it hardly ever changes IP address, which is quite nice. Um, and if you, well, I don't think they really use like Dyn DNS anymore, but I don't know if there's another service out there like Dyn DNS where you can just like kind of have a dynamic DNS, which changes when your IP address changes might not be too much of an issue anymore really but yeah that's that kind of service would be pretty good for this um, and then you could connect to I don't know nafer42.home.com or something like that and that would connect you to your home address that'd be really cool if they did have that but I don't know if they they still do that kind of thing I know DynDNS kind of uh, didn't stop being free for a while um, yeah so if you go on here you can go into temperatures and we can see the current temperature is uh, 194 and 45 which is the uh, the right temperature for what I was what I set it for for that G code I suppose. And if you look down here, you can see it's printing one percent. Okay, and you can hear behind me that it is actually printing, and this will go up in uh, pretty much live time. As you can see, the printing is going up and stuff. So yeah, it's working pretty well. That is the app. Uh, and